Hi, today we're going to introduce Bayesian neural networks and demonstrate how we can use the Auto VNN library in Python to test it as a trading indicator or simply for trading strategies. Auto VNN was released by Google and this video was requested by one of the viewers in the comments section. So if you have any ideas, just let me know by dropping a comment down below. I tried this forecasting method on the Euro US dollar historical data and getting around 60% accuracy. You can think of it as a win rate of 60% while trading, although it's more that the model is able to predict the immediate future trend with a 60% accuracy. Now, before we continue, the Python code I'll be using in this tutorial is available for download for free from the link in the description of the video. So you can download it and use it for your own experiments. To train a neural network model, we need input data and data labels. The input data can be any available features to be used for predictions, and the labels are actually the values we need to forecast. We will consider the input data as the closing prices of an asset. For the last few candles, this can be a window of 10 up to 50 candles, for example. So that would be the input closing prices. Now to label the data, we will consider the last candle of the time window. Then we can look ahead to the next, let's say five candles in the future, and we compare the closing prices of the reference candle and the future candle. If the difference is above a certain threshold, in the up direction, then we know we have an uptrend and we label the candle, for example, two, because it's followed by an uptrend. In the opposite direction, if the price goes down exceeding the threshold, the label will be one. And if the price ranges between plus or minus the threshold values, then the label will be zero because we have a ranging market. So these will be our three categories of price movements, up, down, or simply a ranging price. Then we will train the model on the data and the labels and we will test its potential trying to predict the future price movement within few candles. So what is different about these Bayesian neural networks? Well, in a regular neural network, we often treat our weights or parameters as fixed values once training is complete. But in Bayesian neural network, instead of locking these weights to a single value, we treat them as probability distributions. This means that the network considers multiple possible explanations of the data, which can sometimes yield more robust insights, especially when there's uncertainty or limited data. To keep things simple, think of a Bayesian neural network like having many different parallel universes or versions of your model. Each universe or each version has slightly different weights or parameters, and by looking across all of them, the network can gauge how confident it is in its predictions. This is particularly helpful if you want a better handle on risk or uncertainty in your forecasts. Now, the Auto BNN library released by Google, again, helps automate many of the steps involved in setting up and training these Bayesian neural networks. If you've ever worked with frameworks like TensorFlow or PyTorch, you know that Creating a custom neural network typically means deciding on layers, activation functions, and other parameters. But with OtoBNN, you pick from pre-built Bayesian building blocks, and the library does a lot of the heavy lifting to fit your data. Essentially, OtoBNN can save you from getting bogged down in the nitty-gritty math of Bayesian inference and lets you focus on the overall model design. So in brief, it can't get any easier than few lines of code. In practice, AutoBNN does things like layering different Bayesian functions, like linear or periodic kernels, to form more flexible structures. It tries to find which kernel or function works best for your data, all while keeping track of the uncertainty. And this is very powerful in finance where data can be noisy and patterns can shift over time. A Bayesian model might pick up on subtle trends while also giving you a sense of how sure it is about those insights. So it can fit on time series data, considering the different components of the trend and also the smaller price movements that happen along the trend. So why does this matter for trading strategies? Because when you make a prediction like whether a trend will continue or reverse, you're never 100% certain. Bayesian approach highlights that uncertainty by showing bands of probable outcomes rather than a single yes or no answer. 
You might then choose to only take trades where the network's confidence is high or hedge your bets if the model signals a lot of uncertainty, for example. So next, I'm going to walk you through some Python code that illustrates how we apply these ideas to actual market data, specifically for detecting trend changes. So this is our Jupyter Notebook file. We're going to use the Urias dollar candlesticks one hour data between 2020 up to 2023. That's a CSV file of almost three years of data. I'm filtering volumes equal to zero. So we don't need these uh, candles that are flat where we didn't have any trading and no movements. We're resetting the index and we're printing the head of the data. And as you can see, this is how the data frame is uh, presented. So we have the GMT time, open, high, low, close, and the volume columns. Then I'm casting the GMT time to date time in case it's needed later on. And now we're defining a label uh, data function. This is the function we're going to use to label the data. Remember that we're looking at each candle, then we look at the future price. So look ahead of five candles, let's say by default, and a threshold of 0 0.002. So if within those five candles, we have a price going up by more than the threshold, we label two because we have an uptrend. If the price went down below minus the threshold value within those five candles in the future, then we have a downtrend and we label one. And the labels are actually added in a new column in the data frame named label. And now we can run the function and check the data frame again. And as you can see, these are the labels. So sometimes we have a label one, a downtrend, label two, a downtrend. Just remember that these labels reflect the future of the trend, what happens after this row, after this particular candle, and after that one, and so on. So these are going to be used for the training so that the model is going to read the input data, but then what happens in the future of this data to learn what exactly we will be forecasting. Now we will define a new function named create sliding window dataset to prepare the data to be used for machine learning or for the auto BNN model. This function converts the time series data set into a format suitable for the training. It extracts fixed size windows of closing prices and assigns each window a label based on the last candle in that window. So based on the future uh, trend that was already labeled previously. So in other words, we will have a series of closing prices. Imagine these are the closing prices of uh, the asset. And then at some point we have the label. The label is either one or two or zero. So if it's one, it means that the price went down in the future. If it's two, it means the price went up in the future. And if it's zero, it means that the price stayed within a certain range in the future. Then we're going to have another slice or another time window with new data, closing prices, and then the label. And then another one, and then a label. And this way, we're going to get a series of data. So the model will be reading the data, the trend and the smaller trends and the variability of the price. And then it's going to learn such patterns, what kind of future price or future trends it's going to uh, be followed with. Now to make good use of all the data we have, imagine this is our data. So we have one column, which is the closing price. Okay, so we're going to take a slice of these. We're going to put them into a vector like this, and then the label of the last candle. So the last row, we have the column named labels here. So these are the labels I'm going to put L here. This is the closing price. So we're going to check the label of this last candle because it's going to inform us about the future. And that's the label we're going to use. But then we can slide this window slightly down. So we're going to take another window. So a bit overlapping with the previous one. And now we have a new set of data and then we have a new label again. And then we slide the window again. So always taking the closing prices, as you can see. So we slide it down by five or six candles and then we consider the closing prices and also the new labels and so on. This way we can enhance making use of the data that we have. And that's what this function creates sliding window data set does. So the window size is 50, which means that by default, we're going to have 50 closing prices as an input. Then the look ahead is five. This we've already seen the threshold is 0.2%. So that's already explained previously. So and then we're going to slide the um, 
the uh, considered closing prices window by the amount of look ahead five candles this is randomly it works well uh, you can slide it by one candle or by two candles there's no need to slide by the look ahead I just found it practical to use this parameter within the function and that's what the function returns actually a list of lists of closing prices and their labels now we can use the function providing the data frame make sure it's working and now we will define a new function named walk forward auto bnn one versus rest because we have three different categories we don't have uh, one category and a noise or two categories so that's a multi-class classification and we're going to use an approach called one vs rest using AutoBNN because AutoBNN works best when you are doing a binary classification and here we have three different categories so we basically consider uh, predicting each category on its own so we're going to build let's say three different models the first time we're going to try to predict when we have ranging price so that's the category zero versus the rest so all the rest are not going to be uh, any valid signals so one and two are confused as no signals and we're going to just try to check if we have zero then we're trying another model we're training another model to check if we have a category one to predict whenever we have a downtrend versus whatever I mean all the others zero and two are considered one single category so that's when we don't have um, downtrend and for the third one as well we have uh, two then we're going to use those three models to predict for each row uh, is it zero is it one is it two and we're going to pick the most probable or the highest probability uh, of these three categories so we were going to be training three different models to predict each of these categories versus the rest but then when the three models are used for the prediction they will be providing a probability along with the predictions so we're going to pick the result with the highest probability it's as simple as that now there's a very important consideration here in this function what we are interested in is actually to extract the accuracies of these models at the end so if we're going to predict or to forecast a trend we need to know how good the models are and to do this we will be doing it on a different or a separate data set that is different than the training data set for this we have this parameter named window size so that's the window where we will be operating we're considering 100 rows for example 100 candles then we have the training size this is where we're going to train the models only on 50 candles and the uh, step size is five so this is by how much we're going to slide for the future iteration but let's keep considering only one iteration in one iteration we're sliding 100 rows 100 candles and we're using 50 of those for the training the rest the other 50 are used for the testing so basically for the models the other 50 from the 100 uh, candles are still unseen data or new data and this is where we're going to fit the model so we fit on 50 we test on another 50 and we slide by five then we fit on 50 we test on another 50 and so on so we have training size is equal to 50 and the test size is 100 minus 50 so that's the rest of the candles basically and every time we try to predict uh, on those 50 candles so remember that we consider the uh, 50 candles but then they have one label because these 50 candles were followed by either an uptrend or a downtrend or a ranging market so that's one label either zero or one or two then the testing also the testing candles so the remaining 50 of the 100 window size are also followed by one label zero one or two and we're going to check at the end the um, accuracies either it's correct or it's wrong so if the prediction is correct then we have one if the prediction is wrong then we have zero so that's a binary accuracy style but then when we have a certain number of these we can check the uh, total accuracy or the mean accuracy where in this case it's 62 percent so in 62 percent of the cases the uh, models are predicting a correct category now this function is very technical and you need to be um, specialized or uh, already using machine learning to get familiar with it and understand what's happening but I just need to 
uh, avoid you all the details and all the headaches. I just need to show you those three lines here. So you can see that we have three different kernels in the model. One is periodic Bayesian neural networks. Then another one is a linear Bayesian neural network and the Matern Bayesian neural network. So the first one, the periodic uh, kernel, is designed to capture repeating patterns in data so seasonality, for example, and the width equal to 20 controls the smoothness of the learned function. Period 12 defines the periodic uh, cycle length. So 12 for monthly cycles in financial data, for example. And then we have the linear Bayesian neural network. It's a linear kernel that models linear trends in data. So it's going to capture and model the uh, overall trend linearly. So it's used when the data has a steady increase or decrease over time. And again, the width equal 20 defines the degree of smoothness in trend estimation. Then the Matern, the last one, the Matern kernel is a popular choice uh, for modeling smooth yet flexible functions. So there's no particular reason. We just needed it. We added it to add a bit more flexibility to our uh, overall model. So it's more general than the squared exponential kernel and can handle rougher data patterns somehow. Uh, with equal 20 also controls the smoothness and flexibility of the function. Now, before ending this video, you must know that this took a lot of computation time. So I only limited the data frame sample to 1000 rows, 1000 candles as a testing uh, environment because it took over an hour of computation. Um, maybe it's better to run it overnight for additional data and uh, getting a more precise mean accuracy estimation as you can see here. So because the length of the results actually is just 188. So I got only 188 estimations and the 62% of mean accuracy is actually over just 188 values. So although it's above 50%, I'm sure it's going to be above 50%, but it's also safer to run it on a larger uh, set of data just to make sure that the uh, accuracy, the mean accuracy that we are getting is precise enough. Well, anyway, if it's above 55 or 60%, that's still very impressive for such a model. It's fitting on the data and guessing the future trend within five candles. So again, I've used the hourly time frame as input data. And in other words, we're guessing the future trend that's going to happen within five hours of the current candle. And that's very good for trading. And this was it for this one. I hope you guys liked it. I hope you found this information helpful. If so, please leave a like, leave a comment if you have any ideas to be shared. And until our next one, trade safe and see you next time.